Welcome everyone. This video I'm going to demonstrate the importance of experimentation. Uh, like I've named my YouTube channel, um, you know, that's the approach that I have um, with all my experimentation. It's always just what if I did this, what if I did that. And I have uh, several circuits uh, in operation at all times, uh, just placed in different spots around the house and that allows me to um, annoy my family um, but mostly uh, that allows me to be fluid with my research and uh, I'll have many different devices going at one time if I have an idea I can be spontaneous I can act on it and go in and test what um, the outcomes of uh, that idea would be so here um, you know, again, I was just doing some experimentation for anyone um, interested in the power transfer method. My what if approach has allowed me to find a very low milliamp draw uh, and have a very, very efficient transfer setup. Um, and I got the idea from uh, the, during the 275 day test, which you can go back and have a look on my channel, uh, you can find that uh, that test and the initial um, you know, start of that test is another video there. And what I've done in that video is I've used uh, one of these little LEDs like this one here. And... I've had one in the positive side, so we, with the transfer method, those of you who are not familiar with, we're using a parallel battery bank, and a, sorry, a series battery bank on the left-hand side, and a parallel battery bank. And instead of the normal use, which would be uh, running the load from the positive to the negative of the series bank, Instead of doing that, what we are doing is transferring the power, or a large percentage of it, not all of it, through the light. Uh, and then that goes, so out of this battery here, into the green jumper lead. Green jumper lead runs all the way down to this ammeter here. I'm unable to get everything on the screen. Um, I will place a schematic at the end here so you can replicate this for yourself. Um, there's no point in me showing you this and then hiding <laughs> hiding it, so um, there's no tricks here. Uh, I will put a schematic at the end and you can do this yourself. So uh, we're coming in out of the battery set into the green lead, into the air meter, the digital air meter there, amp meter, and then back through the same there's another green lead there. Back to the green lead into the LED just here. Out of the LED, which is, for those who don't know, also a diode, a light emitting diode is what that stands for, LED. And then into the yellow lead and then into the positive. So of the positive of the parallel bank. So the load is positioned between the two positives, the positive of this serial bank and the positive of the parallel bank. Then it runs through the parallel bank and all the negatives there are connected up of the parallel bank into the yellow lead. I've just tried to tape it down so I could fit it all in the screen as I said before. And the yellow lead uh, then gets bridged. Now in the 275 test I had an, another LED here uh, and so I'll demonstrate that in a second and then it goes through whatever's placed here to make the circuit connected. It goes into the yellow uh, cable which is then connected to the negative of the serial bank. So it's literally a circle. Um, so now what I'll do is demonstrate. So I, I was thinking about uh, the fact that this LED in the 275 day test was uh, in essence a diode. And then I decided to see 
well what does a diode do if we use an actual diode like this one here uh, I'm not really sure what that is it's most likely a IN4007 um, I can't be bothered checking now but I'm pretty sure when I went to get one that's what I got anyway uh, so that's that's the diode so I did a test here and we'll see this on the amp meter you get an idea of just how efficient this little discovery I've had um, and the massive difference so we'll put this on here and uh, so we got seven volts in the uh, series bank and 1.276 in the parallel bank and this is the amps here in the middle okay so normally it chews 160 161 say 160 milliamps um, you can see the voltage in the parallel bank going up quite rapidly there it jumped up quite a lot in potential and at the same time this uh, parallel uh, sorry series bank dropped down significantly so a large percentage of that was potential voltage the light is very bright and in fact that's going to be cooked if we continue that so so we know how much is uh, now that's the reason for for having to stop that is because of the high voltage here now uh, with the 275 day test it was only three batteries and then you have to subtract the voltage of the parallel bank from that so we would have had uh, what 3.6 minus 1.2 leaving 2.4 volts which is why when I did that 275 day test this uh, smaller LED acted purely as um, a diode and no light come out of it on the 275 day test. With the five batteries, um, you can see we're getting up to seven, seven volts there and some of that will be potential. So I then decided to connect the same LED on this side so let's see what that does oh, wrong way around okay so now we can see that that has both lights operating what I'll do is I'll just uh, turn off this light briefly so you can see both lights are operating of course the camera angle and so on is going to be a different perspective but if you're seeing on the screen there that this bottom one on the screen is brighter that's because it genuinely is um, so that's on the negative rail so I found that interesting but look at the low uh, consumption now they're not as bright as they were with the when as bright as it was just using the diode but it's also nowhere near the amperage now also the potential voltage hasn't dropped very much at all and the parallel bank still climbs so then that got me thinking well there's there's something special occurring there with the LED and it's very different to just using a diode there so some other function is being facilitated by that so I thought to myself well what other uh, LEDs would work and and what voltages would they Put out this one I think is some sort of a yellow LED yeah okay so 
place that there. Uh, I'll turn off the light just so you can see that that's a, a yellow LED. Um, and so that draws 23.3 watts, 0.4. And like in the normal transfer mode, uh, the parallel bank is rising, voltage is rising still, and the series bank is naturally decreasing in voltage. This is the amperage being transferred over to the parallel bank. So that is low for that light normally. Um, as we saw before, like th those lights normally consume around about around about 40 milliamps when placed in a circuit in a conventional sense. So this is a red one. Okay, so I'll again turn off that light so it's fair. Red one, okay, and th these are much bigger LEDs than the one that's now on the positive rail. And that one's glowing considerably bright. And so we're still using uh, less than, uh, less amperage than what that would normally consume. And normally if we ran uh, this LED by itself, it would be a little bit more than that. So let's go on to, then I thought I'll try the only other LED that I own is one of these green ones. And then I thought we'll try that. And that is even more impressive. That one will go down to eight, 8.8 .8 milliamps so that's the benefit of doing some experiments um, one would not normally think uh, and I normally well, I didn't believe that uh, the LED in the negative rail was going to function at all um, because of the work I had done with the um, three battery or 275 day test uh, the voltage just wasn't there for the negative rail to be illuminated but um, clearly there's a difference between LEDs you know all the LEDs are not equal I suppose so but if I could highlight um, the importance of doing this experimentation this is not in a book you won't get that nowhere that I know of that uh, a book will tell you that the green LED will make uh, Tesla's transfer circuit produce a very minimal draw on the batteries I've never read anything like that anywhere I also note that um, this one here this green one ironic that it's green isn't it um, this green one uh, doesn't seem to consume the potential voltage you'll knock the potential voltage down and that stays there for hours upon hours and uh, one of the hard things with doing this testing is that it just takes so long for you to work out you know is that is that better that adjustment that I've just made is that better what's the long-term effects of that adjustment uh, and unfortunately it means you're hanging around for uh, hours if not days on end trying to get the data uh, to make a uh, any clear statement um, you know I don't like saying anything until I've tested it and tested it and tested it so you can be sure uh, aside from the fact that I'm human and may stuff up and may get it wrong uh, you can be assured that if I'm showing it to you I've already looked at it in depth um, so this is just interesting in my opinion um, it uh, 
it just changes the whole the whole setup being able to draw way less power than say if you just did the transfer method and you just had this one LED here um, it would be consuming more power it just makes no sense it would be consuming more power uh, if you just had the one and if you get yourself a a magic green one then um, who knows you might find out something special all right thanks for watching everyone uh, please like share subscribe um, this is really of no benefit if more people don't do some more research in this area so the more people this can be shown to the better and um, thank you very much for watching to the end have a nice day